Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to episode 25 of Talk For the Quick Fire Podcast, where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me. And our special guest for today, Ian White, is going to be answering our questions today. Ian, please say hi, introduce yourself, and give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do before I shoot some questions. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. My name is Ian White. I am an actor, uh, costume uh, creature performer. And very occasional stuntman. Fantastic. Well, um, say, to say the least, I've seen a fair few bits of your work and um, it's all very, very interesting stuff. So um, if you're ready to go, I'm ready to jump into question number one because I can't wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear the question. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So um, for question one, tell me about your backstory. How did you originally get into basketball and how did that career take a turn towards acting? Um, well, it seems like a pretty simple question. Um, the the answer lies way back in the mists of time, and my memory is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very tall. I played basketball f- from the age of about 14. Um, uh, internationally, um, domestically, uh, played for clubs, uh, all across Europe. Brilliant. And the, the end of my career, I was um, playing for a club team in Newcastle, where I lived. And um, I I was planning on retiring, and I hadn't told anyone yet. So it was one of these sort of kismet moments when one day uh, I had a phone call from the secretary of the basketball club, and she said, listen, we've, we've had a casting director on the phone uh, looking for somebody uh, like you, and they want to talk to you. And um, my first reaction was, nobody wants to put me in a movie. <laughs> You're having a laugh. And so I said, well, please feel free to pass on my telephone number. And five minutes later, it was the uh, casting director for Alien vs. Predator, Suzanne wow. Smith. And she was looking for uh, somebody very, very tall and slim and fit uh, because uh, Kevin Peter Hall, who played the original Predator, was all of these things. And uh, so I went down to London. Uh, It was a very hot day, as I recall, in um, 2003, and met with uh, Suzanne, and uh, she took me to a very small... um, casting studio near King's Cross Station mm-hmm. and I had a wetsuit and a mock-up of the Predator head with big thick ropes as dreadlocks and a <laughs> helmet went over the top of that and uh, it was baking hot and she said okay um, I'm going to film this you can start running now so I ran around the studio for about 40 odd minutes and um, she said after that she said okay so how how was that uh, and I said well you know I'd be lying if I said it was easy it's not easy but uh, I can do it Wow. And uh, the following day, I met with the director long enough for him to say, um, hmm, okay. And it was about two weeks after that when I met um, t- uh, Tom Woodruff and Alec Gillis, who were the uh, uh, award winning creature effects designers. And it was only about three or four weeks after that that I actually got a phone call from the producer offering me the part. So it was quite a long winded process. Mm, interesting um wow so you obviously got you got chosen for aliens versus predator requiem as well didn't you well uh because uh tom woodruff and alec gillis their company adi were uh, designing and building uh, the characters once again uh, for the movie they um sent me a message and <laughs> if i was interested in doing a sequel and I, I had to send in, a, a, an, actually send in a, an audition tape for the directors because, of course, they don't, you know, even people as, as eminent and experienced as, as Tom and Alec, they're not going to take just their word for it. They've got to see, <laughs> see it for themselves. It is, of course, a visual medium, and they oh. had to see it for themselves. But, um, yeah, it was um, successful. And uh, the movie, you know, the movie was, was very, very difficult to make. We... Um, crammed in twice as much action into half the amount of time <laughs> really wow <laughs> i mean it's, it sounds like it's such a fun experience i mean god playing playing a predator i mean how do you do that how do, how do you 
how do you act like like a predator that's fighting other aliens i mean it's, it's such an interesting topic isn't it but um yeah so i mean looking at your your imbd and stuff it looks like you've you've played all of them in aliens versus predator is that right uh well it's a it's a team effort um there were three characters three main characters that that um uh, expire at uh, varying times of the movie <laughs> um uh, you know there were times when i had to be in six places at once and of course i'm only one person so i can't be in six places at once so i would be on one unit and then a stunt double would be on another unit and some other doubles would be on another unit and mm. then a, a, a guy with a glove on would be doing hand inserts in front of another camera and there was even a um a a, a miniature but eight inch, really? an eight inch tall miniature at one point yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how long does it take to get set up in these costumes then uh AVP was about um, an hour and a half. Blimey, that's a that's a long time. It must be super hot in there as well. I guess that's what the wetsuit's for, is it? The wetsuit? Uh, what? Well, oh, you mean from the edition? Well, yeah, that was to, that was to replicate the costume. Uh, yeah, yeah, it makes the, sense. The under layer of the costume is, is like a latex foam rubber. Right. So, um, uh, actually, for a movie, I've just been working with Alec Gillis actually on another film, and uh, in order to it was shot in the Caribbean, and in order to replicate the heat of the Caribbean, I, I, I basically just worked out in a wetsuit for three months in order to train myself to um, to deal with that kind of heat. Wow, there you go. Right, so uh, so for my next question, um, so Game of Thrones, obviously several big characters played there also, literally. Um, what was that whole experience like for you, and uh, which was your favourite character to play? Uh, you know... <sighs> The favorite, my favorite character was One One, because it was the first time that we got to see one of these characters, one of these aloof, semi-savage characters display anything approaching humanity. Mm. Although I played the mountain in series two, you know he's the most inhuman of humans. Uh, so it was really nice to, you know, to play a character with, um, you know, with with some humanity and some some honour, shall we say? Mm, yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, wow, I mean, it's it's just crazy to think about it. I mean, you've you've played so many characters, but you know, I want to ask as well. What what, what was your favourite? What was your favourite work that you've done so far in all of your career? You know, I know you've been in Prometheus, you've been in Star Wars, you've done so many different things you know what's your what's would you consider the pinnacle of your work almost <laughs> i'm a very forward-thinking person you know i believe life is in front of you you should move towards it so sure. I, I i i believe as does as, as a matter of living that um uh, my best moments are ahead of me but um you know in terms of history they all mean different things for different reasons you know avp was uh, my first films uh, especially in that respect mm. yes and such a um, an iconic character as well you know i was very aware of the the weight of responsibility on my shoulders being the first actor since kevin Peter hall to bring this character to life mm. um obviously working with uh Billy scott was a, a dream come true again because a he's a genius and b this character was an idea in his head for 30 odd years before we mm. got an opportunity to to bring it to life um i'm actually most proud of some of the humans that i've played <laughs> <laughs> i did a uh, i did a little scene um uh police drama uh with uh, an actor called stephen Tompkinson uh many many years ago in which i played a, you know a human <laughs> Mm. Um, that was a really great fun experience um, not least because it was shot on my doorstep and um, I could uh, I could go to work and I could come home <laughs> in the evening right. <laughs> and sit down and have dinner with my wife so that was good fun um, you know they all kind of melt together in this thing we call a career and so it's kind of difficult to pick one moment but as I said they all mean different things for different reasons Absolutely, yeah, and um, yeah, I was going to say the uh, the engineer didn't really meet a, a favourable ending, did he? <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah not quite but oh i'll tell you what prometheus was a great movie actually um, i thoroughly enjoyed watching that as, as, as aliens versus predator as well i mean they're all such good movies and it must be really nice for you to be a part of them and i want to ask as well um do you have a favorite movie that you've been in do you ever go back and watch them as well not really no um my son is is sort of reaching the age where he's getting into you know monster films and uh, all right yeah true level horror films so he's seen <laughs> Atheist, and so of course I have to sit down and watch it with him. But um, <laughs> no, I, I don't as a rule go back and and uh, and watch um, the stuff that I've been in because you know that's what the director's for. The director's there to say, you know, uh, that was good or that wasn't good or do something else. Uh, mm. But yeah, the, I mean, I'm very very lucky that the, the films that I've uh, had the pleasure of working on are you know are, are popular. Or have yeah. been, and uh, and so you know, uh, it, it is you know, when you could go to the cinema and watch a, a film with an audience, that's a really great moment. Uh, I don't do it all the time, but I've done it a few times. Um, Alien vs. Peter Requiem was one of them, where <laughs> I, just, I just took my wife to LA for uh, Christmas and um. And they had a. It was released on at midnight on uh, on Boxing on on Christmas Eve. Right. Uh, so we went to the uh, went to the Chinese theatre in LA uh, to watch it. And sitting right behind me was the writer. No way, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, so we had a nice chat after after the film. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> what a funny coincidence. Yeah. That must have been funny. Yeah. Um, right. So for my fourth and final question now. Um, For new and aspiring actors, maybe some who are also extremely tall too, what advice do you have for them to break into the industry and and perhaps find, you know, or be noticed for their ideal roles? (laughs) Well, uh, advice for actors can be broken down into two separate parts. Advice for acting and advice for actors. Right. Uh, You know, the film industry is is, is a very odd thing. It's a long game. Hmm. Long game. Be patient. Patience is, is... well, one of the most important things you can possess, both on set and uh, and and within your career. And advice for acting: um, remember the three golden rules. Your character is not in a scene, hasn't read the script, and doesn't know what's happening next. Oh, that's a good point. Actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice one. Right. So that is our four questions done for today. And before we wrap it up, it is time for the shameless plug, what I like to call. Uh, Ian, feel free to take a minute and promote anything that you're working on. Want people to take a look at or just something that you believe in. Um, right. Well, thank you to everyone who watched uh, The Northman. Uh, I think that's finally hitting uh, DVDs and possibly video on demand very, very soon. Um, uh, as a film that we shot uh, a couple of years ago in the middle of lockdown. So we're, we're deliriously happy that uh, it's finally out. Um, I've just worked on a movie, as I said, with uh, Alec Gillis. Um, uh, that's called Year Two, and that will be out maybe in about a year. Right. Um, there is something, hopefully, that I'm in uh, coming out next month uh, on the Disney Channel. Ooh, ooh, uh, nice. I'll tell you what it's called, but it's uh, set uh, in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, so, fingers, fingers crossed I'm still in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can only hope, eh? <laughs> and um, hey, thank you to anyone who's... Um, sent me a message of encouragement uh, via social media or said that went to see one of my films and enjoyed it. And if it didn't, well, thank you anyway. I'm sure many did. Brilliant. Ian, thank you so much today for joining me for the Talk for podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on. My pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening. This has been wow, episode 25 and what an episode to go out on. If you'd like to listen to our past episodes, go and have a look at our channel. And if you'd like to listen in for our future ones, make sure to hit that subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and comment. Signing off for now.